Hey everyone, today we'll dive into custom lighting shaders in Unity and show you how to create a breathtaking atmospheric scene. Let me explain why this topic is so crucial to grasp. Lighting is an essential aspect of game development. It can set the mood, guide players and enhance the visual appeal of your game. Unity's built-in shaders are fantastic for most cases, but to truly unlock the potential of your scenes, custom shaders can give you unparalleled control over the look and feel of your game's lighting. Before we go further, let's take a moment to discuss surface shaders in Unity and how they work with custom lighting functions. A surface shader is a higher level shader abstraction provided by Unity. Therefore, it's not identifiable in a shader pass inside the programmable pipeline. It simplifies writing shaders that interact with lighting by semi-automatically generating the necessary code for you. This allows you to focus on the essential aspects of your shader, such as the material's appearance without worrying about complex lighting calculations and low-level shader programming. Surface shaders are useful when creating custom lighting functions because they handle the interactions between the material and various light sources in the scene. By defining the custom lighting function, you can modify how the shader calculates the final color output based on the interaction with the lights, allowing you to achieve unique and specific lighting effects. Back to our main topic. To fully appreciate the power of custom lighting effects, let's start with the basics. For our first shader, we'll implement the Lumbersion model, which is the most basic and widely known lighting model. It provides a simple yet effective way to create realistic lighting in your game. This model helps us represent materials with dull or non-shiny surfaces that scatter light evenly in all directions. This makes them look equally bright from any viewing angle. The model calculates the intensity of reflected light by using the dot product of two unitary vectors, the surface normal and the light direction. To investigate this phenomenon further, we can visualize this process with a light source, in our case the sun, an observer, or better, our right or left eye, and finally a surface to visualize. We know that the sun, or our light source, emits an infinite number of rays, and per each ray we will consider a reflection. But for now, let's simplify the process. Let's consider that the light source casts a single ray that hits our surface. From there, we visualize the normal related to such hit point, which basically is the same on all points of the plane if our surface is a plane, a flat plane. We also know that in reality, the sun's rays get reflected in a bunch of spectral directions like you see here and only the rays that hit our eyes should be considered in order to properly light up our surface. Finally, the lighting of the surface is calculating using this angle, the dot product between the normal and the sun ray direction, multiplied by the light color and intensity. If you think about it for a second, this does make a lot of sense. The dot product is defined like that. So we are computing cosine of the angle between the light source and the normal. But why do we use this angle? This angle is a simple weight to the lighting that a point on a surface receives. In fact, the sun's ray hit the surface with a very steep angle. This would mean that our sun is at the top of the surface, like noon in August. So the light in that point will be maximum. Instead, if the sun's rays hit the surface from the side, the rays will have less power. And all of this is simply computed by the amazing Lambert's reflection formula. Although the Lambertian model is a simplification and it does not account for complex light interaction, like specular reflections, the effect is still physically accurate, which means that it simulates physically 
accurate reflections. But we know that lighting is not only about reflection, but has many components. But by knowing this effect, you know the basic feature of each lighting equation. In order to make this work, we have to set some keywords and custom data structures also in order to be able to store inside everything that our shader and our algorithm together need. We define our custom function that gets some default parameters from Unity. From there, everything is a simple translation of the theory. We compute the dot product between the surface normal and the light direction. And last but not least, we calculate the color of the pixel in analysis. The extra parameters you see are straightforward. The albedo represents the current tint of the object, or better, the current tint of the pixel. And the attend variable is a value given by Unity associated with every light in the scene, except for the directional light, actually. That describes the fall off ratio of the light. Because, as we all know, light cannot propagate to infinity. Last but not least, we have the color of the light. Congrats! Now you know how to compute the diffuse light parameter of every lighting equation. We can now improve our model from there by looking at what Valve did for the original Half-Life. The guys at Valve were not too happy about the Lumbrosian model as they noticed that the rear of an object without direct illumination was basically black, and the effect would compromise the shape of the object itself and thereby making it look flat. A solution to that was inventing the half lumbersian, better known as diffuse wrap lighting, where we simply half the lumbersian component and then half set it back. Finally, we square the result. As you can see in the code, we didn't have the numbers, but instead we use a ref value that controls the final result, and that's basically why the model is called diffuse warped. Also, we can observe that at ref value of 1, we do have a squared lumbersian, which is really similar to the simple lumbersian model that we saw before. Basically, the guy at Bob tweaked a bit the parameters in order to have the effect they desired. We can say, at the end of the day, that Valve knows how to always innovate computer graphics and game dev. Today we explored all the lighting basics, the first piece of a bigger puzzle. But from there we can build up our knowledge and understand illumination model that do take in account specular reflections or other complex lighting interactions, such as fong, blink fong, or PBR materials. Also, we will experiment and combine lighting techniques, pushing the boundaries of what's possible with lighting functions. In order to have cool effects like turn shading, rim shading, and many more to come. So guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to leave a like, share your thoughts in the comment below, and subscribe for more lighting shaders. Up until next time, happy shading. Cheers.